TFPN at technophilespodcast.com. I'm David Geisler, and this is the Technophiles Podcast. And they've got a release date. It's October 13th. It's going to cost $399 in the U.S., but you will be able to play like seamless VR games with your PS4. This week, the cast talks about all of the virtual reality news that has sprung up from this year's Electronic Entertainment Expo, as well as a net neutrality court ruling that has raised some eyebrows. Welcome to Blood City, because this is the Technophile's 301st episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome to tonight's episode. I am here with the regular cast, V-Lobs, Crystalie Malone, and Jake Gill. V Lobs, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Caught you by surprise there a little. Yeah, I know. I was trying to adjust to my microphone and just. You're welcome to continue to adjust it. The the audience is just hearing the noises right now. Yeah, it's great. Because these the, the microphones we use right now are really sensitive to bumps on the um, stands. Mm-hmm. Did you have a good week? Yeah, I had a great week. It's it's finally getting nice and warm out. It yeah, it has. I actually biked out to the lake like a few days ago, oh, and great. that was and that was it's the first time I've touched Lake Michigan all year. So that was nice. Wow. There were lots of people at the beach. It was great. It was it was it was mm-hmm. awesome weather. I got a I got a little pink. Um, I think I've recovered though. It's a warm evening right now. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It, it could be hotter, but it's it's plenty warm no, in the this, studio right this now. This is an extremely pleasant day. When it gets if it gets a lit as we in the next couple episodes, guys, if it gets even hotter, we might just do an episode with the windows open and we'll just let the bird chirp in and everything yeah. else. Mm-hmm. And the, hey, the by the way, that lawnmower was wasn't up. too bad in episode three. No? Hey, I mean it was definitely good. there, but I just kept some music going underneath. <laughs> it's like at our theme name. song. It's just like, it's like yeah. and then you just kind of hear like <laughs> in the background. Oh, it's, sick, sick remix. It's an experimental oh, yeah. type of music where you put yeah. drones in the Guys, this is really, phone. this is experiential. I feel like I'm in the room with them. It's really great. <laughs> wow. Is that a Feels lawnmower real. across the street? Oh my God. Crazy. Crystal Lee, how are you? You hear the lawnmower go from one ear to the other. <laughs> it's moving around you. Yeah. <laughs> it's in the walls. Uh, I'm good. Just preparing for my vacation. So what Wait. is your vacation? Um, I'm leaving in two days from from now. Probably, like, I'll probably be driving as this is I am starting airs. to, well, this, is, this comes out on Saturday, which means, yeah, you'll be. Yeah, I'll be driving. Where are you going? Uh, yeah. I'm going to Arizona and New Mexico, mm-hmm. which I know is ridiculous at this time of year. Mm-hmm. Everyone keeps telling me. There's um, a weird portal between Wisconsin and Arizona. Like, Wisconsinites love Arizona. There is. So I, my grandma and my uncle both live down there, which is why I'm going. Um, yeah. But the last time I went down to visit them, there were so many people from Wisconsin. Yeah, it was really, really kind of weird. Yeah, it's something, it's been Definitely like, I've noticed this for the past couple of years. Yeah. Yeah. What's yeah. that? It's like Wisconsin transplant, transplant hotspot? Yeah. Sure, yeah. because everyone retires and they're like, screw this winter. When it's not we're terribly going. expensive to just have again. like a small condo there. So mm-hmm. it's like, so I wonder if, like yeah, I wonder months, if like months. rates are yeah. similar to Wisconsin. So it's mm-hmm. translatable. Yeah. Um, it's weather wise, it's the opposite because it's not humid there. Right. And it's pretty hot pretty humid in wisconsin even when it's only 80 or 90 in wisconsin it can feel like pretty warm 51 yeah. or so? um i just say yes yes yeah. okay so i actually yes. no i really want to um I'm, I'm going to see if we can fit it in like going from sedona to the next place okay. I'm, gonna, I'm gonna try to talk jared into doing Are you going 51. with your family or just jared just jared that'd be nice this will be the first time we have taken a like couples trip <gasps> This is the ever? first one. Ooh. Yes, ever. Oh, Ooh, this is this is the moment. If you guys That's are into hiking trip. and stuff, uh, and you're in Arizona, and uh, what's the big? City I think Jared likes the outdoors. Goes. Yeah, he does. He's a camper, I think. Yeah. Well, Camelback is there in like somewhere. Oh. Which is a what's 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 a big city in Arizona? I can't even think right now. Phoenix. Um, Phoenix. Yes. Thank you. We were there Take last it. year. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Jake Gill, how are you? You were there <laughs> last year. It was nice. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> It was nice. Yeah. No, my week was good. Pui was gone. <laughs> it took a moment there, didn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I don't know. I had to think about it because it wasn't like terribly eventful. Well, you got Eternal- your nails did. I, I got my ma- <laughs> na- I got my nails did. Uh, Eternal Masters for Magic came out. I got I got a box. I opened a foil Dak Faden Planeswalker. It's like a three hundred dollar card. That Whoa. was pretty nice. So I was like, "There's the box." Wow. Well, you paid yeah. for it. I paid it, for it itself. Paid yeah. For itself. So then my weekend was like. <laughs> admiring my pretties and then mm-hmm. playing some magic yeah. and then sending i use this company called puka trade it's like you like share shout out to Vinny and puka trade I, I love that company but you can like send cards that you you know you want to trade and then you get points and then you can use those points to get cards from other people okay so at the end of my week i like sent out like a bajillion 
po cards and points and stuff and so that was a eventful lot of bajillion. and then bike ride and whatnot yeah it was good no, so you, you had a, did you did bike ride just this morning or something or was that yesterday actually uh yeah well yesterday i biked and today I biked. you're using a what bike app are you using right now run keeper run keeper i use map my ride yeah how do you like run keeper i like we'll run do a little keeper. bit of tech it, here in this intro yeah um why did you choose run keeper let me ask so i don't remember yeah <laughs> it was probably some integration with another app that i had which yeah. is what drew me to it because i originally was on map my ride but i like run keeper so for you like went away from map my ride for it yeah oh. because i wanted i wanted something that was versatile in like uh run keeper does like pocket walks and like you know you have like cool goals and uh -huh. stuff okay, like that fair in there. so yeah i don't know i cool I want to say that there was some integration a long time ago, and then I just kind of got roped into it. Yep. Yep. Nothing wrong with that. Nope. Everyone tries to get me to use Strava, and it's a, a great thing, but like I'm so integrated into Matt, sure. my ride now. Yeah. I literally have my own you're, courses you're, set yeah, here in Milwaukee now. At this point. Yeah. yeah. Remember, I t I've talked about this app before. It's the one where you can you have your courses, but it, or you have your routes, but you can make those little courses and then yeah. do time trials in those. Yes, yes, yes. So I used to just always do other people's, but now this summer I've been now setting my own. Your own. Yeah. Like I've got an up the river run, and so it's it's really yeah, I've got my fun. loops as well. That can, are fun. can you see when other people do your yeah, courses? Yeah, I could pull it up right now and show you like the top 10 of people who have done the course that I built. Wow. <laughs> it's kind of neat. Are you number one? So I wasn't for one week. Ooh. I did. When I set my course that week, I was drive, I was riding on a path going up the river and I hit some pedestrians. That, that is to say you that what? I came did across, you, how many points did you <laughs> came across <laughs> some people yeah, walking on the trail as well. Time. And yeah. it was a family and it was like a grandma and a grandpa and little kids and they were adorable, but it screwed my time. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I had to basically stop the bike altogether. So not even, you know what I mean? Oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. It was a pleasure to to see them having a nice time, but it screwed up my time. Yep. So that that was my base time when I set the route, mm -hmm. rather the course part. So of I got it. crushed. So then another guy came in and crushed it, and then I got it back. Okay. A week cool. later, cool. I ran those breath. little kids right over. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, of course not. I just got lucky. I did it at a different time. It was like not a Sunday morning. Yep. There so you guys, go. we're talking about Ooh. a bunch of stuff tonight. Yeah, we are. Uh, let's see. We're going to be talking about. I think what we'll do first is V. I'm going to have you talk about some of the virtual reality stuff that's happening at E3. Yeah. That has been happening at E3. Mm -hmm. I was kind of addicted to. I was working right here in this studio a few days ago, working on website stuff, and I had Twitch running. I had the Nintendo Treehouse running on Twitch. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah. And they were just streaming the new Zelda, and I am so in. That's. I felt like that was a very effective way to get that game across because it's so different. Yes. It's it's not any, we don't have to get into it that yeah. far. But The trailer is, really didn't do it justice. The, the, the This next Zelda, it's called Breath of Winds. Yeah. Breath, no, Breath, Breath of, of the, the Wild. Wild. That's what it is. Is plenty of other games do this now, but it's finally legit open world. It's enormous. There's like a survival. There's, there's resource element. management yeah. now. Zelda's never had any of this. Uh -huh. But yet like it still feels like Zelda. Zelda Fallout. <laughs> so I mean, More like it's Zelda Elder Scrolls almost. Okay. There's yeah. like a weapon durability mm -hmm. thing yeah. going yeah, on. Yeah, you almost. use up your weapons. You can take weapons from other things. You, you have different cook. clothes that you wear. There's what a console. Is this for? Oh, this. Well, we don't really know. It's probably the Wii U, but it's also the NX and Nintendo. You'll probably doing that get a thing right prettier now. version for the NX. It's, okay. Let's face it. I think the NX got delayed, so I think it's probably just going to be Wii U. Yeah. Which is the worst part of that information, yeah. to be honest, because mm -hmm. that that game that's, looks just fantastic. There's that, a that's a total console seller, but it's so late operating system in the engine of the game there's a sound system there's a temperature system a weather system and a and a time system Holy so God. like it can get cool if it rains but if it rains while you're up in a mountain where it's colder you can literally start taking damage and you can put different clothes <gasps> like, on to take your core temperature back up so it's like Whoa. arc survival wow, wow. They are just drawn from zelda of, guys super yeah. cool. zelda's doing this yet at the same time it's quick enough and light enough uh -huh. that like one more game to lose your life on. right you can jump in mm -hmm. You can jump in and it's a lot of people are saying that it's a throwback to that or the original zelda ever for the nintendo mm -hmm. not in all of the details but in spirit where it was just like they plunk you down you don't even know the story yeah like you come out of your little link home and you just go wherever you want and yep. are you link so you're always a version of a link in any of those zelda games mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know his name always is link but it's like it, some some of those games are hundreds of years apart from each other yeah so, Whatever. I've, I've so never... I totally stole this E3 thing. But um, so we're gonna be talking about virtual reality at E3. Yep. Uh, I'm, I'm just so excited because I've been waiting for this stinking and whatever, thing for like years. Yeah. And whatever else happens at E3, we'll probably just. But virtual reality is that. all over the board. One of the reasons the NX got delayed is because they want to integrate virtual reality to it now. That's actually what the headline was a week or two ago. That mm. is the trend. And people are skeptical because they're like, okay, well, you've already started building your operating system. 
this next Nintendo, you know, the next mm-hmm. Nintendo console isn't right. a console. It's an operating system. And you probably don't want to just like throw that in there. As are you just going to tack it thing. in? Yeah. So yeah. some people are saying, well, that's why they delayed it because they want to do it right. Other people are saying, no, they delayed it and they're just going to, who cares? But we're going to be talking about virtual reality here in the first part, aren't we, V? Then you we're going to go to um, part three. We'll take a break. And in part two, actually, we're going to come back. Crystal Lee, you have a story here about net neutrality. Yes. And a, a, a small victory in the a, a, a battle that has been won within the war. Right. Well, um, depending on which side, you ask it's either small or really big okay uh basically the one of the federal courts at some level underneath the supreme court um uh ruled in favor of net neutrality saying that it's a utility um but of course until something goes to the supreme court there's still many more rungs on that ladder sure Mm -hmm. so we'll be talking about that in part two we'll take a break and come back and then i Mm -hmm. have a story here with uh so apple had their um i almost said e3 not W3, <laughs> yeah. the WWDC. WWDC. Yeah. Uh, just this past week, too. I think it was at the same time as Microsoft's presentation at E3. It could have been. If it could have been. It was all, there was a lot of presentations. Everyone was yeah. 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 A lot of keynotes this past week, a lot of yep. keynotes. And um, I am kind of, I do obviously use all Apple stuff, but even I have been a little, we talked about Siri a few weeks ago, and I even admitted that like it's, it's not holding up these days. Mm-hmm. You know, mm-hmm. it's not as much as I wish it were. And so I saw a couple headlines before the, keynote that said oh it sounds like apple's going to be really focused on siri for this keynote i said okay well i guess let's see what they do with it and i have some news i still don't know if it's going to be what it needs to be but there's some interesting things and i'll save that there's uh, some Mm -hmm. third party things that are happening and we'll Mm -hmm. uh, talk about that in part three and so really it's not me being like hey guys they did it it's me being like i don't know if they did it so Mm -hmm. we'll talk about it in part three v yeah fill us in the electronic entertainment expo yeah man where do i begin um so I tried to watch electronics entertainment electronics yeah more than one electronic that that entertainment expo is pretty electronic yeah there's a lot of it's in a garage electricity there with one thing (laughs) that's probably how it started probably Probably. I reckon so Um, E3's been happening Nintendo had a larger presence than they normally do yeah they they ran it out like three times the average space that a a big company usually does the past Um, couple years Nintendo hasn't even really had much of a presence but anyway yeah um, anyway, so like the first couple days, the, the day zero, as they call it, where a lot of companies will have their presentations and then E3 opens up and that's where everybody goes and like plays the demos of all the games that they've been talking about mm-hmm. on the day before, um, the days before E3. So um, one of the first ones was that I watched was Microsoft. Um, and uh, it was kind of your typical, like, we've got games coming out. We've got all this cool stuff going on. We're like Minecraft and or cross yeah cross console stuff is is happening. It's real. Windows Live is going to connect Xbox to PCs and yeah. And we talked about that on the show, didn't we? Live, though, right? Or is that are they calling it Windows Live? Did I think we, it's Windows Live. Did we talk about this Live. on the podcast or on the newscast? I remember. I think this was a topic on yeah, the show. No, it was. Was uh, yeah, it podcast. was the podcast. It was on the podcast. Okay. It was on the podcast. Definitely. Yeah. Because they were trying. Um, to, well, maybe it was my topic actually. They were trying to yeah. do cross platform Xbox right. One to PC. And and well, and, and they were also technically they were open to Sony if Sony wanted exactly. to do that. That's yes. what the story was. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So obviously yeah. on the Microsoft side, that's all cut and dry. That's happening. They, they celebrated like. that. They had some game demos on stage, um, and they were like, they had lights on players that were like playing on PC, playing on yeah, 360, sure. but. That stuff is fake. <laughs> like, <laughs> yeah, I don't know if you guys knew this, but like when they demo it on on screen, it's fake it as heck. Real yet. Yeah, it's not but real yet. they demonstrated it well. They're like, mm-hmm. this is what can happen. It's pretty dope. Um, but one of the big bombs they dropped was kind of announcing their new console project. Mm-hmm. It doesn't have a name, but they're calling it Project Scorpio, which is a really cool name. And it's going to be their kind of... Um, step into like consoles being able to play like like a microsoft console next xbox whatever being VA, vr capable sure um the stats on this thing was that there's like six teraflops of power in there and that's like the ability to process it's like a microprocess of like a billion a million to the millionth power times in a second dang um i think it's- i remembered that right i don't remember <laughs> Yeah, I don't remember the details on that, but it's they kept saying, building a rig that is 4K and VR ready. Yes. So very mm-hmm. capable. Yeah. So as an example, mm-hmm. like uh, the president of the gaming X, I forget his name, um, 
But as an example, Halo 5 can run at 1080p and 60 FPS and look great, but there are points in that game where it has to lower the resolution in order to preserve the FPS. With Project Scorpio, they will be able to preserve everything. It'll run perfectly mm -hmm. at highest resolution all the time. Um, and, and they want this to happen, correct me if I'm wrong here, V, but like, for years to come because they're they don't want people to have to you know this is something that's coming out and really they just want like they want you to just be on xbox live buying stuff for your pc and your home system at this point because it's mm -hmm. all going to be integrated mm -hmm. in so they want they yeah. want these consoles to kind of be future proof in some way yeah of like these should have a very long shelf life mm -hmm. which is cool yeah that would be a nice they're, change they're thinking far i know ahead, right yeah. because i think that they're realizing that they just need Microsoft needs a presence in the home, like with the, whatever devices you're using. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So that was the other like as a gamer seeing the news of like buy it on Xbox Live as a digital download copy, install it on your mobile. Yes. Uh, if if relevant on your PC and your Xbox right. and play them on all of them whenever yep. you want. So mm -hmm. that's the NX strategy this, as well. So this must just yeah. be everybody. This is just yeah. the thing now. It's just like yeah. cloud based gaming. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Just all your saves are up there and yeah. everything's synced up with everything else. That happens to me all the time with my Mac stuff. I'll download an app on my phone and all of a sudden it's on my iPad and it's on my Mac. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Yeah. Um, that's fine. That's great. I mean, I love that stuff. Yeah. And th it's also thinking ahead in terms of like how many VR games are going to be coming out and we'll see how affordable VR is when Project Scorpio is released to yeah. see how kind of I feel feasible. like it still has to come down. Yeah. Like, everyone's talking about it. I don't know anyone that owns one. Speaking of that, Ubisoft's conference, always the weirdest one in the whole lineup. That's true. Um, very lots of tonal shifts it's odd um but they just all over the place they demoed some games that like there was a it, have you ever played artemis like the um like kind of simulated ship like space no ship oh but thing? i know what you're talking about though yeah yeah you're like it's in, like the full-on it's like a star trek thing a few years ago people thought that people were getting that confused with no man's sky because they were like oh these super simulations oh. It's, They're two totally different games. No, yeah. yeah, Artemis is very like simulation. You, you and your friends have a bunch of computers hooked and you're up. You're flying that. And you're oh, flying oh, space. that Artemis. I'm sorry, I was thinking and, about a totally different game. Yeah, it, yeah. It, it's almost it's, like it just looks like a console. And it's like that space game on your iPhone yeah. where everybody has a different station. Mm -hmm. Yeah, 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 yeah. It, exactly. Um, so they had a game like that, but it was actually Star Trek branded. But there were six people wearing VR headsets sure. playing this thing. Mm -hmm. And that's nice. So they're sitting so, in their seats on the bridge. Yeah. And it was actually members, like actors from Star Trek playing it. So Once they took them off, the reveal <laughs> yeah. was that. Yeah. Um, LeVar the Burton. eye roll, the huge eye roll from Jake over here. LeVar Burton was captaining the ship and he uh, was the most earnest guy of everyone they interviewed for this game. They actually like brought him out on stage and you could just hear the magic like swirling around him of like, this game is amazing. It's so real. I was like actually captaining the ship. I could use the lingo and it applied all the jargon. Um, but like six VR helmets. Yeah, that's you and a your lot friends. Of coin. That's yeah. so. so the idea is that it's each person. They're doing it online or something, and each person has this helmet at their house, right? I guess. And, and you have, have like six. the twenty five hundred dollar rig that can support the yeah. six hundred dollar VR. Yeah. Well, then, so this you know this next Microsoft console is hopefully yeah. the thing that would fix that, right? Mm -hmm. Right. That's what they're hoping. I right. would. They but they the thing is they didn't really say if it was like playable without vr so that's a mystery um <laughs> yeah uh ubisoft that that's... reminds me of that pac-man game nintendo did 15 years ago where it was everybody played there as a ghost on a game boy advance and then pac-man played on the screen Whoa. And it was like a cool idea but if you added it all up it was like 500 dollars just to play that game because oh, yeah, it was all the different game boy advances you, you needed and all the different pieces the yeah. thing is, though, with that, that works a little better, is a lot of people would have that anyways. So these days, yes. Back then, in the S advanced SP days, it was a little less. A little oh, less right, because everyone just yeah. keeps, you keep upgrading because you want the new games. Yeah. But, like, your old stuff is still sweet. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, I, there is an original Nintendo in my house. I'm not going to throw it out. It yeah. works. There's two original Nintendos in this room. Right. right. Yeah. So, there's, there's I mean. one in our house as well. And it, I love it. You, Yeah, I do, too. I've got a top loader and a. And a, and a legacy. Love well, those top yeah. loaders. Yeah, 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 yeah. Right so there. fancy. <laughs> anyway, so okay, yeah. Um, so right. So after Ubisoft, um, Sony's conference was, I think, yeah, it was the same day, um, and they finally like officially announced the PlayStation VR headset. Mm -hmm. um, we talked about this a little while ago. I think back actually when we talked about Void. So a lot um, of people were comparing this to Oculus Rift months ago. Yes, and I think they're jumping on that. Like they're kind of. Leaping ahead in terms is of this like Morpheus? 
Is no, this, different? this is, I think this is something different. They're okay. calling it PlayStation no VR. Yep. Um, and they've got a release date. It's October 13th. It's going to cost $399 in the US, but you will be able to play like seamless VR games with your PS4. Like with your it, current PS4. With your current PS4. That's pretty oh, impressive. You can do yeah. That. Yeah. So that's because they have a new one coming out too, right? PS4? Um, I don't think they like actually the they mid- did. They they have something kind of in the works, but they did not officially okay. announce it. So it was only Xbox. Like Xbox has a new one. They have a new, yeah, they, they, they have a one slim or essentially. Yeah, 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 they have yeah, a yeah, pared yeah, down right. one, and it's the 350. So yeah. I think people are probably just speculating then that Sony will come out with their. No, like, there is. Mid- we're we're like a season or so away from the next new console. I have seen headlines. That's what for I reckon. PlayStation 4.5, quote unquote. Yeah. Headlines, you know, people yeah. talking about okay. it. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, we're almost in new console territory, anyways. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So glad I bought my one last year or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Did you guys watch the Sony conference? Nope. It was an extremely satisfying presentation. Like, imagine. Imagine like all the cool parts of award shows where they kind of do like montages and show you all the things that happened that year that were sure. great, but without like the self congratulating butt patting. Mm-hmm. Um, it was it was like they had a live orchestra in the pit nice. playing music, and they played like the God of War score, and then they started showing the demo for the new God of War okay. game, which looks really neat. Um, mm-hmm. He's like a Viking now. He's got a big old beard. and Oh, really? Sweet. Yeah, he badgers his so Like Lord of the Rings is popular. I mean, uh, Game of Thrones. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, it, pretty much. <laughs> Do a this, manly man. It was beard. very like low camera to the ground. It kind of felt like Last of Us, but mm. different. Um, yeah, it was like a classy presentation. Like they did that and then they're like, let's talk about VR. And then they showed so like a bunch of trailers for all these VR experiences and games that are going to come out that are VR compa- um, uh, compatible. Yeah. They announced Resident Evil 7 yeah. in a very spooky, like Ooh. tense trailer where nice. like in VR, this person is exploring this gross, decrepit house. And there's, of course, mannequins in there. Oh, and like a pot full of rotten food and maggots. And it's super gross. That might be the way to do Resident Evil because five and six were so bad, you know, like so they like, were so kind poorly, of... well, poorly received. Yeah. That. And a lot of that was all the control mechanics and stuff mm-hmm. like that. People were getting frustrated Didn't with. Didn't get like too like maybe more gaming. totally reinvent. Like yeah, that's what I thought. Yeah. Remember when? So when Resident Evil Four Good came out, but... they completely revamped the control. It was like they totally redid the game. You yeah. know, like we were already coming off of Nemesis, and people were tired of Resident Evil Three. There was a lot of Resident Evil fatigue. Mm-hmm. So Four kind of reinvented it. Then we got Resident Evil fatigue again. Five and Six. Yeah, yeah. Maybe this can be the next Four. I'm saying. Uh, it's it's definitely a tonal shift, which I'm looking forward to because mm-hmm. I think that's they kind of fell into the the we had a point shoot gun Call of Duty mode, and then they're kind of it it when they first started it it looked like PT. Sure. Well, and yeah, get with uh, VR, dude, you can get scary. Again. Yeah. Because yeah. You, so you saw the trailer with Norman Reedus. Oh yeah, that was another thing. That's yeah, not VR oh, or anything. I want to ask no. you about some of your VR highlights, but yeah, that trailer did look cool. That oh my gosh. That was like yeah. the best game ever, and it's not even a game. Well, here's <laughs> what happened. They still have a, they still have Norman Reedus on contract, so they so the Kojima yeah, part Kojima of that relationship right. went ahead and started made a game with him, and there's a trailer on it. Looks good. It was hilarious. The presentation for that, like. Yeah. The, he announces like we have a new friend who's working with us with Sony and he's a legendary like game producer. Mm-hmm. Here he is, Hideo Kojima. And like the curtain rolls up and you see the spotlight and there's Hideo and then it's like like um Billy Jean like steps like as he walks up to the front of the stage. <laughs> the floor's was, lighting up. Yeah, like as he walks, like it's creating a light path. Freaking out. Yeah, was, the crowd was going bonkers. So, what were some of the Sony P- uh, Sony VR highlights for you? Um, like the Resident Evil one, of course. Um, another. Now, let me ask that Resident Evil one. Are you walking around? Yeah. Because that's the thing with this VR still. Like we still have this uncanny valley of you're not actually walking around if you're walking around. You know, like the Star Trek yeah. one you were talking about a few minutes ago makes sense. Everybody's theoretically sitting in their chair. Yeah. Sure. You know, we've talked about anywhere. this in virtuality, the virtuality mm-hmm. social worlds, Crystal Lee, like right. a few months ago. Right. I don't know if we're ever really going to get past that anytime soon. But okay. So anyway, yeah. the Resident Evil one is you are walking around. So yeah. you must be using an analog stick or something. Well, you know... The funny thing is, like the PlayStation Move controllers, they were so underutilized for such a long time. This is where they come in. Yeah, I have noticed that. That they're that this is how you maneuver around and kind okay. of motion controls mm-hmm. happen yeah. within PlayStation VR. Um there was a Final Fantasy one which looked a little off. Um I'm sure. Yeah. I think it, we're gonna get that though. Like just make VR for everything. 
yeah, I think th that's what we're at right now. I think is that there's just like a lot of VR experiences. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, a Batman one was announced as well. I'm not sure what that's like. Um, they just basically that could be fun. Though. It it could be. They've got Mark Hamill doing the voice of Joker, of course. I thought he retired so, his voice, his Joker voice. It was, he retired halfway he, through the Arkham. It was, one. I think after Force Awakens, he just needed to <laughs> talk. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, this is know, what lines feel like. Oh, heavy lines. Oh, glorious. <laughs> oh yeah, like here his, I got this, guys. His his paycheck wasn't <laughs> enough to make him happy with that. <laughs> I'm sure he was just fine. Uh, so the so the so the how does the how does the Microsoft and Sony VR systems compare? Like in price, in power, all that kind of stuff. Well, like Microsoft doesn't really have a system yet. Oh yeah, that's, that's right. is that they're kind of like catching up. Like they've already got the PC market or whatever. Like Sony had the Morpheus a year or two ago, right? That's what they were developing, right? Was it? That's I what thought it was Morpheus called. was a different company. It yeah, could be. I, could yeah. be I can check that. Real there quick. were so many that popped up and then just kind of ducked yeah. out, and then Vive came out of nowhere. Vive kind of did. I mean, I it, was not. I did not see expect that. I feel like Vive was like sitting around in the Steam laboratory for a while there, yeah. and all of a sudden it just one day busted out. <laughs> yeah, like and then like and one like, day, get back here, Vive. Everybody was talking about it. Giant go grab. It's not ready. Out it's it. out. Oh, people want it. <laughs> Ship it. It's here. <laughs> hey, you guys. <laughs> I'm the boss. I'm it's like some really like. <laughs> Ticked off sales guys like you know what I know a little bit of code like <laughs> <laughs> dig it up GitHub commit <laughs> whoops <laughs> cool well we're, we're running uh, we're running on time we're running out of time here V yeah. but uh, any um closing thoughts about all the VR that was announced I'm, at I'm, it sounds like all three companies in one way shape or form have now said that they're yeah. committing to VR and Nintendo kind of coming in a little late from what it sounds like what you were talking about those rumors that they're delaying the NX to make it more yeah. compatible just like they're like project Scorpio is doing what PS4 has already done mm -hmm. um they always seem to get in a little that late on that my what Nintendo yeah that's their whole MO that's like yeah I mean, I love Nintendo games. We're just going to wait for everyone else to do it. And then yeah, there's stuff. Like, yeah. here I was. I was just nerding out about Zelda being open world. That's been around since PlayStation yeah. 2 open world games. You know yeah, what I mean? No, no. But just saying. It's okay. Nintendo they, will they never be. They wait for everybody to figure it out first. And they will always like, we'll make take fantastic the games. Bits. And they will always be behind. That's just what Nintendo does. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But anyway, they have so the, the other version, yeah. So their virtual reality thing is they were they're going to add it into their code or something. Yeah. So so I'm real glad quick, that weird controllers. Yeah, you, have, you okay. are actually correct. They before they announced it was. Um, oh, this Morpheus thing. Yeah, it was code name Project Morpheus. Mm -hmm. there it is. Now that it's coming out, apparently they're not using that name. They're calling it PlayStation VR. Sure. And the aptly titled PlayStation VR, that's what I'd call it. Mm -hmm. Let's keep eh. it on brand. Project Morpheus sounds way cooler. Yeah, but nobody yeah. knows what it's connected to. Like even here in this conversation, we I couldn't knew. remember that it was connected to Sony. Right. Still. Well, and then you and then you know Microsoft has got the same thing with their Scorpio. Like eventually, it'll just have a brand name. Yep. Mm -hmm. Xbox Zero or something. Yeah. Xbox One again. <laughs> here we go. More. Project. Well, here we so go again. my friends have been. We are Xbox and and PC game boys, so we're pretty hype about Titanfall Two. Sure. And yeah. Battlefield 1, which mm -hmm. both look phenomenal. And then Titanfall yeah. 2, like our joke internally, though, was just like, I really hope that they just, you know, continue to crush it with the plot line because I don't know if you guys <laughs> have played Titanfall, but I, I was. Not. There is, you have, I have played that game like in campaign mode way too many times and I still don't know what's going what's on. Going the, on. <laughs> the trailer for the storyline in Titanfall 2 is pretty neat considering that they, instead of going with like it's about the gritty like soldier with some stubble it's about the robot. Oh yeah. It's hmm. about the robot. It's all that's about the going valve on it. Huh? It's, to, it's just all about the it up. It's so that's so neat. I mean who that doesn't want to run around in a giant like I loved Battletech and Mech Warrior and all yes. that stuff so uh, man I any company make... that does like a mech well I'm like I'm in. That's my first my, well, I, I learned Microsoft Excel <laughs> because I took all my Battletech sheets yeah. and translated them so to you're a, a tabletop Battletech guy. yeah I I won the hexes I played yeah, it like crazy I, I like at Gen Con originally when it was in Milwaukee I won a copy for the Genesis like the yeah. Genesis game and it was just blew my mind I talked my friends nice. into buying like the starter yeah, packs and stuff nice. half oh. of them stuck half of them didn't you know yeah, yeah, thing, yeah. But mm -hmm. sweet Battletech was great Cool. So one we thing I go. what's up though? It'll only be like two seconds. One it. thing I wonder about this is because you were saying like how everything's going like toward VR right now. Yeah. But I'm wondering if this is going to turn mm -hmm. the way um 3D movies did, where for a while everything came out in 3D and then so. it and then it tempered 
and you still have 3D yeah. movies, but then you now you also have movies not in 3D. Like they're really, they're just excited about the technology now and they think that's going to be the future. Or another way to right. think about it it's, is It's not like, quite affordable or feasible. For which really I wanted to bring up as, you know, here's, here's the little help, you know, hope for the consumers who are like, I can't afford the VR. Just give it a year yeah. and then yeah. you'll get your own new game. So what it has to be is there has to be a benefit to using virtual reality, not just like, oh, look, I can look around now. There has to be. There has to be there has to be some reason why that enhances the gameplay. Some of that might be obvious. It's like, oh, yeah. more immersive. Okay, fine. Mm -hmm. But in, if it, if there's drawbacks in other ways, like this, like you're getting disoriented because you're walking around with an analog yeah. stick, hypothetically, sure. stuff like that, it's not gonna. You know, there's gonna be some people out there that want the virtual reality no matter what. Yeah. But right. it's going to fade unless there is a a distinct advantage. And I think a lot about the original DS, Nintendo DS. Mm -hmm. That first season, the, the, everyone would agree mm -hmm. that the DS line has been a great success for Nintendo. Mm -hmm. But that first year that the dual screen and the touch screen was out, you didn't see a lot of like, it took about a season or two, two or three years in where people were really coming up with interesting ways to use a stylus yeah. or interesting ways to use sure. the two screens. Mm -hmm. You know, that first year, everything was just a map on that second yeah. screen. You know what right. I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things the Wii U hasn't captured. They have not figured out how to really use that system. Yeah. Like Nintendo just needs to cut it out with the whole double screen thing for the consoles and all that. Yeah. Okay. So could VR be like a stylus and a touch screen and a dual screen all into one system with a microphone and stuff like that. So what did that do for people? Okay, sometimes there was the bold, the bold, you know, the whole like blow at the screen. Oh, you blew yeah. a thing out. Oh, isn't that clever? Yeah, but it didn't like, enhance the gameplay. Yeah. Right. But eventually that 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 stylus did mm -hmm. for certain games. It was quicker to move p puzzle pieces around, quicker to yeah. navigate things. Mm -hmm. uh, you could get analog sometimes. Obviously, it was enough to make it happen. What could, what could that be with virtual reality? At, off the top of your head, what could... That thing be that we don't, that people may not have their heads wrapped around yet, developers right. even, but could be the thing. Like I think about what you talked about on the newscast about the Ghostbusters thing. Like mm -hmm. that one sounds like I would sign up for that experience yeah. immediately because mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I'm actually walking through a space. You're, you're I'm actually touching walls. Yeah. Um, so I don't know what you were about to think of something. There. I, I think I so the creators of the Resident Evil 7 one um, had a demo like last year and I might have talked about it, but it's called Kitchen. And you are tied to a chair, okay. and you're it's a dark room, and you're in a kitchen, and this creepy like lady <laughs> comes up to you, and you're like sitting in a chair while you're doing this demo. She comes up to you, she gets in your face, and of course the surround like the headphones, yeah. and it's all scary. And she stabs you in the leg, and there's like footage of people, people like, playing oh, this demo sure. yeah. that are freaking out mm -hmm. because it's that immersion. And I think that having kind of actual tension mm -hmm. like you are the main character and you're not sitting in your living room pretending like watching the main character do something i think that's gonna raise the stakes people are gonna have to figure out how to really make that like how yeah, to make they, it they have you. to go past the jump out and scare the, you suddenly yeah well, the, that right. yes. but, yeah. but basically what's happening the worst versions of vr right now is that your head is just that right thumbstick yeah they just replace, yeah. you know, the math of your head moving around. I'm moving my head back and forth in the studio right now yeah. and up and down. Mm -hmm. And it's like, oh, it's like a first person game. And instead yeah. of having the right thumbstick do that, it's whatever the gyroscopes do yeah. in the thing. Mm -hmm. That's the worst version. Yeah. But to like make so it. So how do they take it higher? Maybe it's make the sound. It, make it you. Make like the sound design. Um, the Vive uh, has some like good experiments with like maneuvering around space where like i saw one with the vibe where you are kind of almost doing little portals to move around yeah that that one's a little weird see that's i think that's going to be a hurdle for people to jump over in terms of using vr because right now maneuvering around spaces is not the easiest because with vive you can walk around but you have like a five meter by five meter space in order to do that mm -hmm. um and then you have to like teleport around um hmm, interesting so that's I think that's going to push a lot of people to think more creatively now because there's these bounds of like what's what you're able to do and what you're not able to do. And it's not just like infinite forever. We can do anything. It's amazing. Like people will think harder about how to get people into the game, like get invested, be entertained. Just put me in a robot. And right. just, you know, you can sometimes you just slap someone in a I robot and they're it. okay with that. Well, and actually a good point with the robot is I've demoed two uh, 
games, or I guess they were trailers, not full games, on the Oculus Rift, and one of them was a driving game, problem solved. You sit right. down, and, and then it's there. Exactly. Right. Great. So anytime you have, you, I mean, it could be a car, bike, whatever. Anytime you have a mechanism like that, then mm-hmm. you, it's natural to transfer the, make the it, controls, right? Make it applicable. Yeah. The other one, it was supposed to be like you're walking around, and it was something like the portals. So what you would do is you, there were, it looked kind of like a diamond, but if you focus on the diamond, then you walked toward it. But then the problem yeah. there is it's not 100% open, right? You can mm-hmm. only walk right. toward a diamond. You can still see everything because you can w- look around from wherever yeah. point you are. But if you, you focus on a diamond long enough, that triggers walking. It's like mist or something. Yes, yes, yeah. exactly. It actually oh, felt yeah. a lot like mist, yeah. which I'm not saying it was bad. It wasn't, but so my favorite games are always open world. That would not work in open world. Mm-mm. Because it would inherently close down yep. on the world. Yeah. So I absolutely agree. However, if they had an open world and it was something like you have to move around on a bike or something, that might be okay. Yeah. If done correctly. Mm-hmm. Or an Iron Man suit or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Some, just anything where mm-hmm. yeah. you... If it doesn't make the game play better then it's not then it's going to be like 3d movies because i think a lot of people yeah. agree that sometimes sometimes 3d movies are fun but yeah. ultimately they're not always the best option yeah i don't like they're not actually necessary right but when, they, find... when it's done right it's really like gravity and 3d yeah. was awesome gravity was yeah. thrilling mm-hmm. and honestly even when i saw avatar i was like well i gotta say it's i mean it's well made you know like it's yeah. like it's a good execution of 3d yeah. and not right. well made artistically yeah um mm-hmm. But, us yeah. in space. And then I saw Civil <laughs> War in 3D and that was great, but um I had a harder I almost would have been fine with it in 2D, to be honest. Sure. Or did you I didn't notice any weird like 3D gimmicky stuff where they're like throwing stuff at the screen where it's no, there was anything in that? Okay. We we've gotten beyond that, I feel, for most movies that mm-hmm. are in 3D so. right now. We gotta now. go, guys. We're like 40 minutes oh into this part. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh my gosh. Run. Okay. We run. Let's take a break and uh we'll be back talking about Net neutrality, Crystal Lee Malone. We go from games to serious business. Yep. That's yeah. fine. We'll be back in just a moment. See you in part it. two, everybody. Uh, until then, though, V, if people want to tweet you about uh, their <laughs> virtual reality, their thoughts on virtual reality at the, I almost said the E3 Expo. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. The, the E3? At E3. E3. <laughs> <laughs> um, they Electroni- can... Electronics Entertainment Expo Expo. They can do that at bear underscore Annika Annika. <laughs> <laughs> love it we love it when people tweet the show at technophiles pod or find us on our facebook page uh, or or youtube or stitcher by searching technophiles podcast or go to our actual website technophilespodcast.com what if they want to email us david if they want to email us they can actually email us at technophiles podcast at gmail.com and if they have any thoughts about any of this stuff that's happening in virtual reality right now you are more than welcome to send us an email and we'll continue to discuss it cool. marvelous i'll see you guys in part two mm-hmm.